What I want to know, how many times are we as a class going to need to flip the pennies, flip the pennies, until we have everyone seated? I said this was exponential growth plus, um, it says right here, it has a pattern of constant multiplication, and I would say it's multiplying by 1.5% every year. And let's see if our conjecture was correct. So we already said we expect that it's going to be a curve. It is a nonlinear function. We don't expect it to be a straight line. This was a lesson for ninth graders taking Algebra 1 using the Common Core Standard version of Agile Mind for Algebra 1. So here's the deal. Everyone's going to get a penny. You're going to flip it. You're going to catch it. You're going to turn it over. You're going to hold it like this. What I want to know, how many times are we as a class going to need to flip the pennies, flip the pennies, until we have everyone seated? I want some conjectures. Brian's going to start us off. Brian, how many? I said two. Kyra, what is your conjecture? Five. Micah? It's a guess thing. It's not necessarily like going to happen. It could be five and it could be two. That's the thing. You don't okay. have to exactly. Micah, that's an excellent okay. distinction. I always feel it's better for students to experience first and then apply the math framework to it. So I would always do hands-on activities first and then apply a math framework. And that's actually how the advice for instruction suggests sequencing the activities. This is really an amazing opportunity to bring together everything that we've been learning and to reinforce concepts. Smart high school. So I would like someone to read the problem situation. Georgette, take it away. In 2008, Smart High School had 1,000 students. The student population has grown by 1.5% every year since. And the school district administration predicts the same growth will continue until at least 2028. Excellent. And Portia, give me one piece of information that's important from this problem. In 2008, Smart School had 1,000 students. Okay, so we are starting out with 1,000 students in the year 2008. And Stephanie, another piece of information that's important from reading the problem. Uh, the population of students grows by 1.5% every year. Excellent. So we have a growth rate of 1.5%. And Stephanie, how long do they predict that growth will continue? Uh, 2028. 2028 or 2028, okay? Why is this an example of exponential growth? I want you to turn and talk to the person next to you about why this is an example of exponential growth. I said this was exponential growth plus, um, it says right here, it has a pattern of constant multiplication, and I would say it's multiplying by 1.5% every year. The second situation, uses half-life and uses carbon dating to illustrate exponential decay. Agile Mind really encourages math fluency for students because it encourages multiple ways of looking at the same situation from different perspectives. Looking for a volunteer. We went from experimental data to theoretical data. We looked at both table representations of data, then we looked at graphical representations of data, and then we will tie all of that together using a mathematical framework. All right, Dakira, go. One half. Huh? One half cubed to times 32. One half to the third power times 32. How many of you wrote one half raised to the power of three or one half cubed times 32 times our starting value? Okay, how many of you wrote it the long way? How many of you wrote one half times one half times one half times our starting value of 32? Are they equivalent? Yes. Absolutely. When we have x, when we are generalizing this as a function rule, what are we gonna do in the last row, who came up with a function rule? The power of x times 32. One thing that I really like about this topic is that like so much of Agile Mind curriculum, there is a lot of use of multiple representations of the same function or the same situation. 
And so really helping students develop math fluency and being able to move between a graph, a function rule, a table of data. Being able to move between all of those different functions is something that Agile Mind reinforces from the very beginning of the Algebra One curriculum. And to me, today was a perfect illustration of being able to move back and forth between multiple representations. What's the constant multiplier here? 32 is our starting value. What are we multiplying by each time? By one half. By one half. The goal is always experience first, go through multiple representations, apply a math framework, and then ask extension questions to one, confirm understanding, but two, really make sure that that learning has been embedded for the students. You guys have been rock stars today, and I mean that in the literal and the figurative sense. We will be continuing with this packet tomorrow. Please stand up, push in your chairs. There is nothing better than releasing students out of the classroom, feeling that they have really explored a concept and really have used their critical thinking abilities to complete that exploration. That is something that they're going to apply when they leave this classroom and walk into their anatomy classroom, that they're going to apply when they walk into their English classroom, because we are trying to raise the next generation of critical thinkers.